everybody, this is BlockET, we're playing Smite today, and right now, I'm gonna give you a short, well, a pretty comprehensive tutorial on Artemis. This is gonna be pretty long, cause, I mean, I know a good deal about Artemis, I've played her a lot, she's actually one of the only attack damage carries I've ever played, so I have a lot of experience with her. So this is gonna be pretty long, cause I kinda got a lot to say. So, alright, first, Artemis in general. Artemis is an attack damage carry. She has the highest DPS in the game if you use her number 2 ability, which is <laughs> pretty over... not overpowered, but I think it's one of the best steroids in the game. It boosts your attack speed by up to 75% for up to 5 seconds. It's pretty gnarly. Uh, in case you haven't figured it out already, or haven't played as Artemis before, Artemis is a ranged attack damage carry. Now, this means that she deals damage from a distance, she's built to do physical attack damage, and, you know, she shoots arrows. Oh, it's pretty fast. Oh, that's right, I bought items. Um, and carry means that early on, the team will have to carry her, but later on, she can carry the team. So, basic breakdown there. Uh, she's kind of like an assassin-y mix. She's like a mix of an assassin and a, just a full outranged AD carry, because she can do a lot of damage in a short amount of time using her 2 ability. I mean, here, I'll pop over to Fire Giant real quick, and I just for like a demonstration of power, we can kill within like, what, 10 seconds I bet? Yeah. So, alright, just... Uh, sometimes Artemis is seen as a lower tier character. I really don't think that's the case. Oops, dang, can't see the health bar, sorry. Um, I don't really think there's any bad gods. Yeah, see, I, I think that took like 10 seconds. Uh, I don't really don't think there's any gods that are that bad that if you pick them, you're just going to lose. I mean, notwithstanding team composition, but I think it's really more up to the player. Uh, with Artemis, you have to be pretty aware of positioning, because she's pretty squishy, and if they rush you, you don't have that many options. I mean, you have, what, two? Actually, you have a good deal of options. Because that's just how Artemis rolls, but, okay. Uh, hold on, I'm gonna sneeze. Uh. <coughs> oh, sorry. I couldn't find the mute button fast enough. Um, so, alright, let's go through a basic rundown of her abilities. Ability number one is a hard CC root, that means it keeps them from moving. It's called Transgressor's Fate. When enemies walk into it, they'll be rooted for two seconds. And you can lay up to three of these traps. You can use these traps in a number of different ways. If you're one of my favorite ways, if you're being chased by like Fenrir or something while you're running, place one right at your feet. Ninety percent of the time they'll walk straight into it. Or if you're defending, like say your lane partner goes off on a roaming spree, you can lay three traps. Like, you can lay your traps right next to each other at uh, at the edge of a tower or right in front of a tower and restrict access. If they walk into it, you can do some pretty heavy damage to them. Artemis, sh her abilities are really useful, but her damage dealer is her basic attacks. That's what's going to deal damage. So, yeah, that's her number one ability. Oh! Uh, her traps also act as wards, so, I mean, if you're not really doing anything with the traps right now, you're just dueling it out in middle lane, it's a good idea to put some of these in the jungle, just to see what's going on there. Artemis is pretty squishy, if you're taken by surprise, you're, you might not make it out alive if you're not really prepared for it. So, that's her number one ability. Oh, and uh, they also do a little bit of damage, it's pretty negligible. I think the entire time I've played Artemis, which is like... <laughs> I've played like 80 matches with her in Chalice. I've only had one person die from damage to Divines. And that was like, they were already pretty much dead. So, moving on to her number two. Oh, her number one is called Transgressor's Fate, by the way, but pretty much everybody just calls it Vines. Yeah, okay. Uh, her second ability is her steroid called Vengeful Assault. It boosts her attack speed, at max level, it boosts her attack speed for 75% for 5 seconds. Just an example of what that can do. Here's a regular attack speed with... This is my... This is one of my personally favorite builds for Artemis. 
You might see Fatalis down there and be like, oh, what is he doing? Fatalis is so bad. Uh, I did a video testing Fatalis er earlier. It's not actually that bad. I think it's pretty utilitarian. So, uh, I'll link to that video. I can discuss it now. So, this is her attack speed, like, if you finish your build near level 20, and this is it after using the steroid at max level. It, it's a big difference. And if you build, one, once for fun, I just built purely for attack speed. It was like a, it just looked like a purple line in front of you. It was crazy. Uh, but, yeah. Uh, her two ability, all of her other abilities are going to be kind of centered around that, with the excep exception of her three. Now, her three is called, su oh, sorry, my phone went off. Her three is called Suppress the Insulate. It's a ranged ability, and you basically just... It's like a volley of arrows. It comes down, it slows the target, which is useful. Like, say you're chasing somebody and just need a couple more basic attacks to hit them with. It's good to do that. And it's also, I this, in Joust, this is actually the first ability I upgrade, because if you're just fighting and, you know, they're probably staying back by their archers, you can land this on them pretty easily. Uh, it's also, if you're getting chased by a Fenrir or somebody, you can also throw it right at your own feet. It'll slow them down, and just when I've been, like, dueling with a Fenrir, I've, I use Fenrir as an example, because pretty much every time I play as Artemis, I destroy a Fenrir. So, you can just throw that right at your feet, it'll slow them down. They probably won't be expecting it, and that might give you a chance, might give you a chance for your two to cool down, or for you to get away. Yeah. And also, if people are running away, this is a really good ability just to hit them with. I cannot count the number of kills I have gotten. Somebody's running away with low health, just rush forward a little bit. Dead. So good. Uh, shoot. Uh, I don't have all my abilities upgraded because I was going to show you the two at level one, then the two at max level, but didn't do that for some reason. Uh, the A slow on this is, see, like, uh, the slow on it is 25%, and what I just did there with Suppress the Insulate, it's one of your main uses for it. Alright, her number 4 is called Caledonian Boar. She summons a Caledonian Boar, which it's like this big giant boar in Greek mythology, like, it's probably like 12 feet tall, and it just destroyed. Uh, hold on, I gotta take a breath. Hmm? Okay, I'm not used to talking so much, sorry. Um, the boar lives for six seconds. Now, the important thing is that this boar will charge an enemy god, and then will be stunned for a second before attacking another enemy god. So, the way the math works out is that, at maximum, this boar can stun three gods. Now, Artemis' ultimate isn't the best. Sometimes, if you're just out of range, the boar won't, the boar won't charge. And that's so frustrating when you're rushing forward, and really all you need to do is for them to get stunned, and they're just out of range. It's very frustrating. So be careful for that, make sure they're going to be in range. Uh, keep an eye on their escapes and everything. So, yeah, her ultimate, it does, I would upgrade it when you can, it does a good chunk of damage. I mean, right now, uh, it would do 640 damage just when it hits somebody, which fairly often when you when you use your special somebody will get killed just by the boar alone which that's pretty nice now another weakness to her special is that the boar if you saw it earlier the boar had health and like another attack damage scary or somebody can just I've heard of it where people put out the boar and it's just killed instantly before it can do anything which that's very frustrating so don't rely on the boar too much but one thing the boar is really good for, say you're doing a one-on-one -on -one joust, which Artemis is a really good one-on-one -on -one character, I highly recommend trying that out as her. Uh, if you get rushed by, like, say, Bakasura, Fenrir, physical melee guy, drop your boar, put vines on him, and vengeful assault away. Uh, actually, we've gone into combos now. That's the basic cheap Artemis combo. I personally don't like using it because it just feels so cheap to me, but I mean, come on. I mean, it, I, I wouldn't worry about it. Just do it if you feel like it. Oh, you know, I never went over her passive. 
Uh, her passive is called Still Target. Basically, it's kind of like how Fatalis stacks for each ses successful basic attack. You get a stack of Still Target, and it increases her critical chance by 5% for a maximum of up to 15% of 3 stacks. So yeah, basic combo, drop your pig, place vines on them while they're stunned, and just wail away on them with your 2. Lot e pretty easy kill there. Now another combo you can do is, is if somebody's just like straight lining towards you, if you're up close to somebody and they run away, you can put vines on them, which, scooch, come on, not a good push him. Oh, this should work. Oh shoot. Yeah, you can put vines on them. Hit them with. If you're having trouble landing your suppress the suppress the insulin, you can do it while they're vined. Which you can get a kill that way. I've seen it happen. But if somebody's like rushing you, like strafing like this, you can probably place vines on them. You'll see that you don't have to place the vines right on them. If they're close, they'll just kind of fall in. So, especially in the narrow jungle hallways, you can, might be able to place that just right so somebody has to walk into it. You see, that's that's the limit. That's not close enough. But if I walk over here, he'll go into it pretty quickly. Yeah. So that's another thing to do. Uh, they actually changed that quite recently before Arbus only used to be able to throw them right at her feet. Now you can throw them from, I think it's 30 feet away in the game? I don't know. So it's pretty useful. and. You can actually place it behind people like that, and with a real player, they might walk into it. <laughs> they might not notice it's there. So, that's another use of divines. I know I'm all over the place with the abilities, but yeah. So, I guess that's kind of it for abilities. I mean, I, I'm, right now, I'm not really going over abilities, I'm going over situations of how to use them together. <laughs> he spawned and fell in the trap. Silly raw. Uh, she <laughs> killed him ten times already. But yeah, if you get, um, it, your two is your most useful weapon. You'll notice that in these combos, it's like, use the boar so you can land the vines, so you can hit them with your two a lot. That's basically, you're centered around your two, because... I mean, my DPS right now is 1.7. That's pretty high. You use this. Shoot. It's 2.38. It's almost at the cap. It's just absolutely crazy. So, yeah. I if you get jumped... I've had it where I've worn people down. Like Loki came at me. It just turned this on. You can hit him pretty easily when they're at super close range. You, you can wear them down just as fast as they can wear you down. Especially if you had hot hide of the Nemean line, so um, I think that's it for abilities. So let's scooch back to the shop and talk about builds. Now, like I mentioned earlier, Artemis's main damage dealer is her basic attacks. Nothing else. Her ability, her strongest ability, is based around just boosting her basic attacks. Her one is built around making people stand still, so you can hit them with your basic attacks. Her three, it's a little more utilitarian, you know, deal good chunk of damage from a distance. If you upgrade it, like if you prioritize it first, this does do a good bit of damage. But this is like slow them down so you can catch up and hit them with your basic attacks. Even with the boar, stun them so you can hit them with your basic attacks. It's pretty self-explanatory almost. So yeah, so with that in mind, you want to focus your build around her basic attacks. And Artemis' passive also gives you a hint on how to build her. If they... What am I doing? <laughs> Hitting tab. If they put in... If like they build into the character a higher critical strike chance, you might want to think about that. Now, this is an in-game build I have right here. And this is just all physical, no defense. If you're doing a 1v1, you're probably going to want some defense. So. Uh, Fatalis, I recommend it. It's not a good item on every character by any stretch of the means. On Artemis though, it works. It gives you the highest attack speed boost in the game at 42%. That's higher than the second highest attack speed boost by 17%. So yeah, and it gives you plus 10% movement speed, which that's defense too. Movement speed is defense because it lets you dodge. And also, you don't move slower when moving backwards. 
People do not expect you to do that, since Fatalis is so unpopular, I cannot count the amount of times, which I say that a lot, but I have been saved so many times by just backpedaling out of something with Fatalis. Oh, so good. But with Fatalis, it doesn't give you any actual stats. It just improves the one you already have. So you're also going to want, like, Executioner, very good item, core item on Artemis. It gives you physical power, attack speed, and a very good passive. But it's almost... I don't know why you would not buy this. Uh, Deathbringer, also pretty good physical power, critical strike chance, and it increases your critical strike damage, which is really good. Uh, and these, Fatalis, Rage, and Deathbringer, these all synergize very well. Because Rage boosts your physical power and everything, and it can... I've had it where I've gotten like 12 or 10 critical hits in a row because of this. And it just lets you deal so much damage. Because Rage, if you don't get a critical strike, it increases it by 5%. And that maxes up to 10 stack stacks. And with your... Shoot, what am I saying? And with what you already have, and what Rage already gives you just in its basic stats, that's 80%. <laughs> if you miss a critical 10 times, which I don't think that's ever happened, unless you're fighting the Minotaur. And with Artemis's passive on top of that, you have a 95% chance of getting a critical hit. It's pretty brutal. Her critical hits at max strength, if I go over to uh, the, what is it, minion waves, you'll be dealing around 600 damage a hit. Um, yeah, it's pretty brutal. Uh, hold on a sec, I'll be right back. And we're back. So, yeah, um, about, he can deal so much damage with one basic attack. I remember in one, I think it was a 3v3 joust, I killed an enemy Agni in four hits. <laughs> like four basic attacks, it was crazy. Uh, that was actually a game where as Artemis, I killed the entire enemy team by myself, and then went and killed the Minotaur. Oh, so good. So good. And you know, of course, I didn't record it. Uh, so yeah, continuing with the build. I have Retaliation. This actually isn't my first choice. Normally, I recommend Devourer's Gloves. Because it's easy to build stacks on, it's pretty cheap, and it gives you physical power and good lifesteal. Which, lifesteal, it's very good on Artemis, or any AD carry, really. Because, if you... Oh, sorry. <coughs> I'm sorry. Uh, I had a malt milkshake for dinner, and I'm not sure it's quite sitting well with me. Uh, that's not all I had. I, I'm not that unhealthy. Um, it, it can restore so much health with lifesteal. I've actually had it when I'm being attacked, and I've already taken somebody out. And, like, I'm at half health, and then somebody else comes up. I focus on minions, because you can get so much health from them. It's crazy. Yeah, this isn't my first choice. Eye of Retaliation, this is something I would get if you're consistently losing by just like a hair. Because, just look at the passive. That That's why it would help you there. Because the lower you would get on health, the stronger you would get. Oh, uh, and Artemis does kind of need lifesteal just in case. If someone, if somebody on the enemy team has Dynemian Lionhide, you definitely want this, because... Artemis is, does all her does all her damage through basic attacks. If they're reflecting 20% of that back at you, it can be pretty bad. Uh, it's 20% now, not 30. They nerfed it. So, uh, let me look at my build list. I wrote this. Shoot, it's terrible here. Uh, what else does it say? Uh, but yeah, this is a late game build. Let's say early game, warrior toppy. Pretty good idea. Let's put. You, you're going to want the Warrior Edition. It will do a lot more damage with the physical penetration than you will with the critical strike chance. Besides, Artemis al already gets that for free. Uh, for a starter item, Death's Toll, I pretty much always use Death's Toll. If I'm pretty confident that I can beat the enemy in a fair fight no matter what, I'll just go straight to Devourer's Gloves, just so I can start getting the stacks and lifesteal on that for more sustain. But, yeah. Whew. Um, let's see, what else do I have written down here? Um, and if you're playing, most of my Artemis experience is 1v1, so another little niche item you can get is Golden Bow. 
You may not have heard of this item, because I don't think I've ever really seen anybody use it except me. Um, its stats are okay. It actually boosts movement speed, I forgot about that. But the passive is off its basic attacks. It basically gives your basic attacks like a little area of effect. And with Artemis, her basic attacks do so much damage, especially to minions, it's crazy. So you're playing against like a really tough pusher in a 1v1 like Hell or Kronos or Vulcan even. This will let you push back pretty easily. You can take out an enemy minion wave and... Well, I don't know, let's go find out. I think it's like 5 seconds or so. It's pretty crazy. I mean, you can take out the archers with one hit. I mean, just watch. Boop. Boop. Well, that's just two hits, but... Uh, hold on a second. And we're back, but yeah, let's just showcase the power of the golden bow. Boop. 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 Weird, I'm not getting any critical. Oh, I sold rage. No. Uh, I sold rage, so... I normally... Rage is pretty much always one of my late game items, but... Trust me, you can clear an enemy menu wave super quick with golden bow. It's a niche item to counter against if you're going 1v1 with a super strong pusher. Or even just, if you think the minions are going to be a deciding factor, it's a good thing to get. I, I personally like it. It's a nice little change of pace. Don't have to focus on minion waves for a long time. Uh, if you're fighting a character with very high mobility, like say, Apollo or Bakasura again, Frostbound Hammer, I don't have it on my favorites, but it's pretty good. It gives you physical power, health, which is always a bonus, and it slows down enemies, which it's a 25% slow on this. <coughs> Sorry. Uh, it makes it a lot easier to land basic attacks when they're slowed. It's just, it really lets you deal in the damage. I mean, I can't really show you a good example of it here, because I think the Gold Fury is immune to it. So, yeah. Uh, what else do I have on my list? Do -do -do. Keep on your list now. Uh, let's go over defensive items. Personally, Artemis's defense is almost her attack, so you're going to want to focus... I, I would only buy one legitimate defense item. Generally, I get... Uh, actually, there... Where'd it go? I like to get Rogue of the Magi. I like its passive, and at the beginning it's pretty cheap just to give you a little magical protection. But Stone of Gaia might help. That'll help with sustain too. Uh, Bulwark of Hope. That's pretty much the go-to magical protection item. If you can afford it, go for it. It's normally a little pricey for me. I like Magi's, ble Magi's blessing. Uh, Magi's blessings passive. Sorry, tongue twister. I like its passive better anyway, so I don't really get that. For physical protection, the breast. Yeah. Tongue twisters. The Breastplate of Valor. It's one of my favorites. Pretty cheap. More mana, which Artemis does have mana issues at the beginning. Like early game. Y you always want to get meditation, just in case. Because you really don't want to be in that spot when you're out of mana. You just really need to land one suppressed insulin on them. So, Breastplate of Valor is good. Cooldown reduction is always nice. And if you're playing against, like, a Loki, Bakasura... Height of the Nemean line is good. It's the second highest physical protection you can get. It's pretty cheap, and the passive is nice. It reflects 20% of all basic attack damage. Yeah, it, I don't think you can really beat it as a protective item. Whew. Sorry, I gotta take a breath again. I'm really not used to talking so much. But, yeah, I think that pretty much covers it. Uh, that's a pretty in-depth tutorial. If you have any questions, ask me. <coughs> Sorry, throat's getting dry. Um, if you want to see actual gameplay of her, I've played, I've uploaded quite a few jousts as her. They're not always the best examples. I think so far I've only uploaded ones where I've played against pretty relatively unskilled physical melee opponents, which Artemis has a huge advantage over those just because she can deal the same amount of damage from a distance and they can't touch her. So. Yeah, I think that's about it. If you liked it, leave a like, leave a comment if you have a question or want to yell at me about Fatalis. And if you really liked it, subscribe. I'll be doing more of these in the future. So, 
Alright, see you next time.